Hey, it's Colleen from Dots of Love Canada. I am coming to you with a Valentine's tutorial today. I'm going to be painting on this six inch wood round. I buy these on Amazon and I use Folk Art. I'm going to grab the bottle here. Multi-surface satin paint. Um, one thin coat is all you need. And because it's satin, it allows you to wipe off um, the chalk or any mistakes fairly easily. So I've put together a little color palette here, which I'm really loving. My idea here is kind of moody pinks and reds. And so I am using Tuscan Red, which is one of my very favorite reds. I have mixed in a little bit of the Alizin Crimson into it. And then I also just have the Alizin Crimson on its own here, which is just a really nice, deep kind of pinky red. I've got Royal Fuchsia and I have got Carousel Pink. All of these colors are available at Michael's Craft Store, which um, I'm in Canada. And then I also decided to go with the Color Shift Raspberry Flash. This is just such a fun, sparkly, um, kind of like reddish burgundy almost, the middle one here. Another fun one, if you want something brighter, is the Raspberry Rose from Craftsmart. And it is um, quite a bit brighter, but it looks very cool too. So those are the colors I'm gonna be using today. I like to kind of just pair it out. It helps me when I am deciding what colors to place to be able to look at them all together like that. I'm gonna be trying out my new tools today. I got the happy dotting tools and I've tried out a couple of them and I'm really loving those. So I'm excited to be able to use them today. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with the largest size, which is the 15.5. And I do think I'm gonna start with a red center. It is Valentine's, so I feel like that is gonna be just perfect. So I'm gonna load up my paint and make sure that it is actually dripping off. That is how I know I have enough. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I have north and east-west line facing me. You can always just put a little bit on to make sure that it's exactly where you want it before going all the way down. I got a little bit of an air bubble on the side there because I did mix this paint fairly recently. So that's okay, I'm just gonna load up again. This is a very big tool, so it is the hardest one to get a nice amount of paint on, especially using the paint pots that I'm using. It's a lot easier in an open palette actually. And then for that little air bubble there, I'm just kinda trying to turn the tool a little bit to squish out doesn't want to work exactly so I'm going to just grab a stainless steel tip and I'm just going to see if I can manually even it out And I might try to go once more because this guy is giving me problems here. He does not want to go straight, exactly straight. So that's the center. There is still just a little bit of an air bubble that popped on the side there. Things like that do bug me because I am a bit of a perfectionist at times. I'm trying to let go of that a bit. So I could take a Q-tip and I'll show you how. Um, if you just take a Q-tip, wet it with water, roll out the excess, you could just go inward like that. And then you can just use, again, a stainless steel ball just to gently bring that back out. And that's a lot better. Now it doesn't have like the air bubble there. Good. 
feel like the centers can be the most difficult for sure. Okay, so now I am going to start with, um, okay, let's see what kind of styluses she has here because I haven't used them yet. Um, I'm assuming these are in milliliters, which uh, millimeters, <laughs> which dotting tools normally are. So I'm just gonna grab the ones that look really tiny to me. And the normal dotting tools um, usually go up to three um, millimeters. So this would be here, the 0.5, the smallest, then the one, the 1.5 1 and the two. So I'm gonna start with the 1.5 actually today. And I am going to um, take my metallic color with the 1.5. And I'm always going to set up my first layer using north, south, west, and east. Okay, so I always set up like that. And then I go in between and you could either place one on each of your lines from your grid. I have a 16 point grid that I have done on here. And I love the Happy Dotting Company silicone mat. You can see how well loved it is. And I have cleaned it several times. Um, and the different stencils you use, like a 12 point or 16 point, it's just going to break up your segments differently, depending on the kind of design you want to do. So the other thing you can do is you can do one directly in the middle uh, here, and then you could see if you have room for one or two. So this is the way I like to set up my first row doing north, south, east, and west. And then I place one directly in the middle. So if I was using the smallest tool, I could probably squeeze two in there, no problem. In this case, I don't believe I can. So I am going to do one in between and I'm getting more paint on my tool now because it's building up. So I may also dot over the initial ones I did, they're still very wet. So I can just redot over them and just apply a bit of pressure to get them to uh, spread out a little bit further, just so that they're all the same size and they're all taking up the same amount of space. There we go. So that is our first row done. I just am using a baby wipe to wipe the tools off. You can use a paper towel or even an old sock a microfiber cloth, anything works. So now I'm going to go to the larger size, the two, and I'm going to go to my next red, which is that Alice, uh, what is it called here? Alizarian Crimson. So I'm just loading up, remembering the golden rule for dotting is dip dot, dip dot. So you're dotting every time. There is one exception and we will get to that. And so now I am placing it every second all the way around in between two dots in the previous row. So I'm not necessarily following my guidelines right now, although I can. And where that dot is being placed is directly in one of the boxes. I do like this every second dot around so that I make sure my spacing really is even. Sometimes if you aren't paying attention to your guidelines or not using them and you just start going all the way around, you won't even notice till you get to the curve that you might be squished kind of um, up to the left and then you end up with a big gap somewhere. So that is why I always set up going every second one all the way around to just ensure I'm keeping things symmetrical. Okay. And that is the second round. I know I don't have the best lighting right now. I kind of decided to do this tutorial on a whim because I need to create best for an in-person workshop that I'll be doing in a couple weeks as the example. And I thought, hey, it would kind of be cool to throw up on my YouTube channel as well. 
So now we've got, um, this is the company here, Happy Dotting Company. She is so wonderful. I have molds from her and stencils from her. Um, she also just came out with a brand new um, marker to draw your guidelines with. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm very excited to do that on my next project. So now I'm actually going to use the S4 here because I can see this is like the bigger ball that I want to use. And I am going to be, oh, uh, maybe I won't. I might actually even go bigger. I think I am going to go bigger and do some big dots now, actually. So I am going to come over to these guys and see what I want. I think I am probably going to go with the 6.5. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do the 6.5 and I'm going to move into my pinks now. So I'm going to grab the Royal Fuchsia. And again, I'm dipping like up and down quite fast and making sure that I have a nice point on the end. And then I'm going to come in this section here, I'm going to place north, south, west, and east right on the center dot. And close to the previous row but not touching, I've ended the previous row right on my first ring of guideline. So that's perfect because then I can ensure that all the way around this next element I'm setting up is starting at the same point. And then I am going to go in between and fill in one more because I am going to build some petals. On here. Okay. So those are going to be the center of what I'm calling a petal. And with the petals, I'm going to be using um, the smaller styluses again to create. So I am going to start with the very smallest one. And I'm going to do the carousel pink. So I'm actually going to start, sorry, with the one to create the tip of it. And I'm going to put a dot directly centered above on the same line that I centered the big dot on. And you can turn your piece as you work. I'm trying not to turn it just so it's not constantly moving for the video, but definitely that helps to turn it as you go so that you can ensure it is completely symmetrical. And then I'm going to turn it over to the smaller side and I am going to walk down the dots. So I want the same amount on each side. So you can actually count if that helps. One, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, if you don't get the same amount on the same side, that's okay. But generally, you'd want each side and every petal to have the same. So this is walking the dots. So I'm not re-dipping. I'm dipping once. And then I am just walking my tool down. And it has less and less paint each time which is why the dots get smaller and smaller and give you that cascading look. If you have questions, go ahead and drop me a comment below. I would love to answer any questions for you. Or you can always message me on Facebook or Instagram at Dots of Love Canada. I love connecting with individuals who are giving Mandela a dot painting a try. It's so exciting. And I know there's always so many questions. Or if you are an experienced dot Mandela artist and you're giving this Valentine's round a try or trying it on a stone or a different surface, 
I would love to see your finished art. So tag me in it on Instagram or Facebook. Okay, so now I'm going to move up to the 1.5 and 2. So I'm going to use the second side. And I'm just kind of deciding, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do a three dot cluster. And um, I want this to really be pink. So I'm going to use the carousel, or sorry, the royal fuchsia again. So for this one, I'm going to place one dot to the right of my line, one dot to the left of my line, and then one dot centered above that. And I kind of like the, the top dot to be a little bit bigger, and I just do that by tapping more paint or dipping again. But you can certainly have them all the same size. And then once I have these complete, I'm going to flip the tool around again. And I'm going to walk the dots down the side. So for the guidelines, this again right here is a way I'm using them. It doesn't matter which ring I'm on right now. What matters is that the current design element I'm doing all ends on the same ring. So see this guy here has come to the end of this ring on both sides. And so for this design I'm doing, I want to make sure all the way around that I am consciously making sure that I am fitting this design so that it is symmetrical. And when I go to do the next element, everything is lined up and on the same part. I don't really celebrate Valentine. It's like I never have too much. Um, but I love, like, I just love pinks and reds and how everything is so pretty. I love chocolate. Lindor is hands down my favorite. And now I have two girls, so they love, I went over the line because I'm talking, they love Valentine's and my older one that's in school, it's so fun to put together like little Valentine's cards and bags for her to take to school and see her get so excited about it. There we go. Okay, last one. My entire background is retail, so um, I do think Valentine's is a commercial holiday, although it is important to celebrate love and to take a minute and spend time or spoil those that we really love. So it does have a good meaning for sure. So now I'm going to use the other end of this, the 1.5. And I'm only going to dip once. And then I'm going to place a dot kind of interlocking in between the previous ones. You don't have to do that. And again, it's six. And then what I'm being conscious of is this line here. This is like a section or a segment for this petal. And I don't want to go outside of him because if I go outside of these lines, I'm going to go into his design. So this is again, how you're using the guideline. You're making sure consciously that you're keeping these dots you're walking inside if you can, so that each design stays directly in its section. And that again, just helps you keep everything symmetrical, and set up. If you're finding that the tool, the dots are too big, then you can always size down and just use a smaller stylus so that the dots aren't as big, which will give you a bit more room. And then as you can see, 
Um, I don't know why I do this. Some people think it's weird. I do the top right and then I do the bottom right and then I turn it. So I'm always favoring my dominant hand. So I'm doing the top right side and then I'm coming down here and doing the bottom right side. And by the time I turn this once around, then both sides are done. I just find it's most comfortable for me to do it this way. Okay, so we have those petals done. So it's starting to take shape and look like something, which is always the really exciting part. So now I just want to think um, how my design is going to go out. Again, I am um, doing this with the purpose of an in-person workshop in mind. And this is the um, tutorial that I do have written up instructions for. And so I want to, I don't want to go too loosely off this design so that I can still use it. But I'm thinking right now if I could incorporate a heart in here, um, so in this space here, and then I could still build a petal on top of it. So I think I might do that. I think it would be really cute. And I want to do it in the metallic. So I'm going to use the bald, either the S2 or the S4, I think. Um, I think this might be a bit big, but I feel like this will be a bit small, but we'll try it because metallic paint uh, does spread out quite a bit. So, okay. So to make the heart, you're going to load up your paint and then I want it to come um, probably to the bottom of this line here. And so I'm going to start with it up here. So I'm going to do a dot right above this line all the way around so that I know it's going to be symmetrical and I'm just going to give it a nice okay so there's a couple ways you can do this you could do it just using the same tool or you can flip down to the smallest tool you have which would be like your micro tool and then you're just going to draw the outline of a heart so you're just kind of going down once, like you're making a comma. And then same thing at the top. You're just going to draw it down. And then you're just going to color it in. And if you want more paint, then you can just kind of grab some more paint and go over it. And that is how you can make a really quick, easy heart. Um, let's try the next one and see if you want to just try doing a heart with one tool, then a, you would go and draw, uh, sorry, not draw. <laughs> You'd place your dot still. I want to just get another scoop here. And then you would just go like this, like that, and then again in the middle. And then if you wanted or needed to, you could use your smallest tool, like the little micro dot, just to drag it. So I actually am happy with that. And I feel like it's pretty easy with this tool. So rather than using two tools, I'm going to just go ahead and use the one. So theoretically, my heart, my heart should all turn out the same, but they might be slightly different. So you have the outlines there, and then you're just going to close it together. You want to clean your um, tool off often because the more you keep painting, the more paint it keeps picking up and it makes it larger and then you don't get that nice crisp line. So I'm just kind of scraping off that extra paint before I go in 
and then I'm pulling it down to the same line so that they're all ending at the same place. I feel like this one could use more of a point. So I think this is really fun. It's a really cute way to just really get festive and add the Valentine's theme. You could even in the center, you could instead of like the big circle, you could have done a big heart, which could be really fun. Or once your circle dries, you could even draw like a dot like we're doing a big heart in the center on top of the circle or even on any of these bigger dots. So you could really have fun with it and add in some of those hearts just to make it nice and festive. It's really fun. And we're at our last one. just wiping off the extra paint. Okay, and there are our hearts. How fun is that? I think it's so cute. I really like it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that tool off. So now I am going to do a bigger dot on top of this guy, I want it to be bigger than the pink dot I had done here, which was the six and a half. So let's see if I can find maybe an eight. I have an 8.5 and a nine. I'm not sure if there's another one in between that. Let me take a quick look. 7.5 and eight, yes, okay. So I think I will probably do one of these thinking I might do the eight and I'm going to do it right on top of the heart. Um, and so I just have to decide on the color. I think I'm going to go back to the reds and I'm also going to go back after and top dot these, which will be really nice. Um, I think I actually, well, yeah, let's do the bright red. I kind of want to do not do the bright red just because I'm not a total red person, but I think that would look nice if I, to have that like nice bright punch of red. So I'm doing every line on top of the hearts and I'm trying to have the bottom of it on this line. So again, it doesn't matter what line, just that all the way around, you're starting them on the same line so that it is symmetrical. And I am purposely doing the line above the heart. So it's kind of going to be off centered to the previous petal that we did. So sometimes you will have more room and I'll, I'll grab a a pencil or something so I can indicate that better for you. Sometimes you'll have, like, see this heart is pretty close to the dot. This one looks quite a bit farther away, but this heart, I guess, was just started lower. So instead of bringing him lower, I'm, I'm just ignoring whatever I've done so far. I'm looking at this line right here, and I'm making sure that these big red dots all start on the up right above this line so that even if there was a little bit of spacing issues before that, now we can self-correct it. And it's not something once you're looking two feet away, which is probably how far away you'll always be when you look at it, not something that you would notice. So I'm going to do three rows of a petal on it. So I know my biggest row will probably be this one. So... I think we'll start um, with the one, well, we'll start with, I guess, the small one, and I'm going to do the metallic um, to begin with. So uh, sometimes I like to just actually not do the center, but start right on the side and just walk down. I think it just, it gives it, you'll see, a nice... 
round look to it. And then the next row that I do, I will do a dot in the center. Um, so I am using again the Raspberry Flash Color Shift Metallic. And the big dot I did was the Tuscan Red that had a little bit of the Alizarian Crimson mixed into it. I really love using metallics. I'd love to know in the comments if you are a person that loves metallic, sparkle, glitter, or not. I always have ever since I was a kid. And so when I started dot painting, I just can't help myself. I Most every piece I do has metallic. I've used a lot of metallic gold, but a soft gold is what I like. And then I absolutely love the dimensional Nouveau drops. So I love using those as well because a lot of them have the like metallic or sparkle and then you also get the dimension with it. So almost every piece I create has metallics in it. I like the sparkle and shine and that kind of pizzazz it gives it. This one here, um, my dot is actually to the right a little bit. So one thing you can do for that is when I go down this side to kind of give it a little bit more room. And when I come on this side, almost like overlap the edge of the circle just to help line it up. So again, just ways to visually self-correct it. If it was really bad, I would remove it and start again, but I don't think it was that bad. So now I'm going to take the two to make um, one big dot and then I will flip it around and use the smaller side to do the other ones. So I am going to do the Aliz Alizan, why can't I say it correctly? Alizarian Crimson. Now, so I'm using the two milliliter to make one big dot. And with the petals too, um, how you set your dot up really can affect or determine the shape. I'm doing mine directly above. And again, you can see that I have a line that I'm going to make sure it's lined up all the way around. If I actually wanted to do it right on that line and leave a little bit of space, then the petal would um, have more of a point to it um, and a little bit more defined. The way I'm doing the petal is going to be just more of that round shape, um, not as much of a point on it. I don't know if that makes sense or not. So now I'm going to flip it around to the 1.5, the same color. And again, I'm going to walk the dots down, interlocking them between the previous row. It's January 16th today. Um, so less than the halfway point to my birthday. <laughs> and it's the perfect time to just be bundled up doing these crafts. Um, I'm on the prairies in Manitoba, Canada. So we've been having with the windshield minus 35 weather here with like blowing snow, extremely cold. If you go outside without full gear on, you will get frostbite in minutes when it's that cold. So I just love painting indoors. I do like being outside too and we do go out in the cold. Sometimes necessity, right? You got to snow blow and shovel and sometimes just, you know, for walks, tobogganing, skating. I once read there's no bad weather. There's only bad clothes. 
and I really liked that. So you just have to dress for it. The kids love it. But it is the perfect time to start a hobby or if you have a hobby you love that you've been putting aside. I feel like that January, February is a great time to guilt-free not have to worry about think other things you should be doing. Okay, so that is that. So now I'm going to this S4 and S2. Um, thinking that this is meaning stylus, that would be my guess. And so I am going to do a big dot first. I just have to decide if I'm going to do one or if I want to mimic this and do the three, that would bring me probably here even a little bit over. So it depends what I have planned for the outside. So I, oh, it's tough. I might try it. I'm going to use the Tuscan red, the bright one. I might try it and just see how far it comes up because I kind of wanted to do a ring around the outer of this. Okay. So it would come up that far. It is really pretty. And I could still then do like a, it would be a pretty small ring, but I could. So I think I am going to do that because I like how full it makes it. So I'm just doing a dot to the left of the line, to the right of the line, and then directly in the middle. And I'm, for this one, I'm not ending right at one of the rings it is coming slightly over so that's okay I'm just making sure it's not quite halfway so if I do notice on one that it feels like it's too far up I'm making sure it's under the halfway point slightly And then because I'm using acrylic paint, which is generally what we use for dot painting, it dries really quick um, comparative to some other paints. So the nice thing is once you get down your whole design, you generally can already go back. And if you wanted to add top dots, that is where you're just adding a dot on an existing one that's dry you usually can already do that my center dot is clearly not dry I used a lot of paint on that one so it's going to take a little bit longer but my big pink ones they're they're getting there okay so now I am going to flip it around and use the stylus too in the same Tuscan red interlocking these dots in the previous row and then usually with this design <clears throat> I do a four cluster a four dot cluster in this space <clears throat> so I just have to decide if I still want to do that or if I wanted to incorporate another heart because I could also do that I could also alternate do like a heart every second space and then the other one do a four cluster kind of get the best of both worlds in that scenario feel like these are definitely not completely lined up to the previous row. Um, this is my first time using these tools. So I, it's interesting because it, it's not what I'm used to. And so this 
the size of the S2 and S4. It's a little bit of a bigger gap than, I feel like I need an S3. <laughs> okay, so there she is so far. Looking so cute. I love it. So now I am thinking of doing the four cluster dot or like I said, it could even be like a big heart, which could be very cute as well. Um, and in that case, I think I actually, what I would do is I would do, I'm going to see where, if I do a four dot, I want to kind of finish them at the same place. But if I did a heart here and then I could actually do two dots down, which would be really fun. So let me see first, because I am thinking I could do it every second round. So I'm just going to grab um, these dots I'm going to do now could be like the same or a bit smaller than that one. So maybe a six milli millimeter. And if you don't have um, as many sizes as I have, that's okay. If you're using the standard acrylic, um, use the purple or one size down. Um, so the third smallest in your acrylic rods. And then colors, right? We have to decide on the colors. So we're going to go pink here. I have not used um, a lot of the carousel pink yet. So I might do the royal fuchsia because then I'll come back and top dot it after with the carousel. So I think I'm going to get right down here and I'm going to make sure that it's on the same line all the way around. And then I'm going to go one on the right and one on the left and then one on the top. So I'm trying to ensure that I finish inside of this last line so that if I do want to do a circle all around the edge, I have room to do it. So that's perfect. When I do these four clusters, um, you can certainly do it all like that and go to the next one. But I do like to sometimes just do the bottom all the way around and then do the right side all the way around and then the left side and then the top. And the reason for that, especially if you're using metallics, is that they have just that minute to set so that they don't risk running together. The paint I'm using right now, I can tell is not going to. Uh, run together it won't be an issue but sometimes like if I'm using white or like I said a metallic they spread out a little bit once you put them down and you don't want them merging because then you have to separate them erase them so I'm going to do this every second spacing and with this one I will have to Make sure my dots aren't getting bigger and bigger because then I'm going to run over that line. So you might just need to clean your tool off frequent, frequently. This is a pretty small project, so you should be okay to just do four clusters of these without needing to clean your tool. Hey, one on top. I feel like I need more paint for that one. Okay, perfect. So now let's add the hearts in. And I think for the hearts, I am going to do the, the carousel pink right away. So I'm thinking that I want to do um, a dot. Let me see. So right under that line, down, and then, so this one, I think I'm going to start the top of it under the second line. And then for this one, I am going to turn the tool around to the smaller side so I can ensure just that I have a good definition. And then I'll see if we like it. I feel like it's coming a little, like I can't get that point perfect because it's touching. I was kind of wanting a, 
a break in between it. How cute. Okay, that's going to be really good. However, I, I just want to redo it because I don't like the, um, I don't like that the heart's touching. And then I think I want to do it potentially. So um, again, I'm wetting a Q-tip and just rolling off the excess. And then I always roll away from the center of my design. Okay. Always roll away from the center of your design so that you don't have other things along the way that you need to clean up as well. Um, I'm tempted to do these in the metallic, but the other thing to think about is how I want to finish. I was talking about doing a little dot border around. Um, I don't feel like I would do that in the metallic. If I did, it would be on top of another color, but still is too much metallic ever too much. I don't think so. Okay. And then the other thing is I could do a different color under the heart. So if I did the heart in the carousel pink, um, then I could do the dots underneath in, let's say, this crimson. So I think I was okay with where I put the dots. I just wanted to start the heart higher up. So like one, two. So I'm not re-dipping it because I want the one underneath to be smaller. And then, okay, so I would do these all the way around because I'm using the same tool um, to make the heart and then I don't have to clean it off again. Okay, so those, that's so pretty. Oh, I really like this crimson color. I'm kind of tempted to, I'm kind of tempted to just do the heart in the crimson because on these I might type top dot the carousel anyway. So, okay. So I, I want this to make sure it's under that line. So I'm going to start a little bit higher up this time. And then bring it in. And I even did, I think on a bookmark, I think it's here, I can show it to you. You can even top dot your heart or I'll show you two things I did like this one. I don't know if you can see that, but it's top dotted. See with another heart. So that's really fun. And then the other thing I tried, I'm going to grab this guy over here, was just doing some little gold dots on this one just to kind of jazz him up a little bit. So there's lots of fun that you can have playing around you with the initial heart, just drawing it, but then also afterwards underneath. Okay. I feel like I still came down farther than I thought I would on that heart. So I'm going to fill in the top a little bit more this time before I do the bottom. just want to add some more paint. Okay, perfect. I love that one. And then I definitely will <clears throat> get... Um, a picture tomorrow in the daylight because it's just been snowing, snowing, snowing. The sun hasn't really been making an appearance always. We'll see. But tomorrow morning, I will get a shot of this in the daylight so that you can actually see the colors really well because I know this video is a little bit on the darker side because uh, I'm just working with dark here because of the time it is. And I wasn't planning to do this, but I was planning to paint this and I thought, hey, you know what? 
this would be really fun to share because we're nicely ahead of Valentine, so you have lots of time to give it a try. I'm gonna add more paint again because I want like a nice luscious heart. I was gonna say thick, nice thick luscious heart. Okay. Okay, we did it. Yay! So fun. I'm loving it. I just, I need to get more of that metallic on here because I absolutely love it. I'm so happy I went with that one and not the bright one. Either could be really nice. I just like this one. Um, red. Red is one of the most transparent colors. Some of them, but in the paint. And so here you can see it dried. It's almost like transparent a bit. So once it's fully dry, there's two options. I can re-dot it once more, which will take care of that. Or I'm planning to do top dots where I'm going to do a different pink color on top. So it, depending if I'm doing it right in the center, that would cover it um, or not. So I don't really worry too much about those things. So, okay. So now all that's left is doing the border around and then coming back and doing some top dots. So I think I'm going to try out this number four. I like to just kind of place it here and see, but yeah, that would work. There's no real trick to this. Like for me, I just start somewhere and then I just keep placing dots and turning my round all the way around. I do not worry about closing the circle and I've rarely ever had an issue because it's just math. It's the same size circle all the way around. So it should work out, right? Um, but the other thing you can do if you're worried about that is you could place one on every single line all the way around and then take a look and see. Do I have room for two in there? And that will guarantee you if you want it really exact. Um, so I am looking at doing like a border all the way around. The other thing you can do is you could do, I will try to show you here. I have a piece I'm currently working on. Um, let's see if I can show you this. The other thing you can do is like this. You could do like a cascading. So you put a big dot in the middle and then you size down and you walk your dots out. So you could do that kind of cascading border. I would start it then in that case here and walk out this way. But because I don't have the same design element, like I've alternated these two designs, I don't know how for sure that would look. You could do it, I guess, above one of these, like above the heart going this way on just the hearts. And then you could do something else above here. I just really love giving options because it's fun to be creative. So I'm ready to do mine. So I'm probably um, going to speed up this part of the video. I'm hoping not to really edit it too much. So you might see it speed up now. And I just realized this was shaking. So hopefully the whole video is not like that. Um, color, what color? I think that I'm gonna be adding the carousel pink on here. And I might add the Allison crimson there. Um, so I think I might, do one of the reds and then I will top dot it with the metallic because I really want to bring more of that in again or I can just do the metallic but I really love layering so you get that texture to it so I think I'm gonna go with the crimson so I am just it doesn't matter where you start um if you want to you know have a dot symmetrical okay I'll just start there and then I am just dipping every single time. You can always come and go back over. But for this, you probably will for sure halfway through, um, if not every quarter, want to see if you need to clean your tool if your dots are starting to get bigger because of the paint pile up.
So now this is dry enough that we can go ahead and add top dots on there. So I definitely want to add the metallic in the middle. I know that for sure. So I'm just going to get a nice big one here. I don't want to cover it up completely. So I'm going to go with the 11, I believe. And then I am again going to get that nice peak on there. And if I decide that I do want it bigger, then I can always, the metallics can be so stringy. Um, it's just the <clears throat> makeup of them. If I decide that I do want it bigger, I certainly could go up a size and I think I might do that. Um, this certainly would be okay, but I don't like a lot of the bottom showing. So that was an 11. So 11.5 and 12. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the 12. So I'm just going to load that up with paint. And just, I am going to give it a bit more pressure than I normally would just to spread it out a little bit. Okay, perfect. And then I do use the ballpoint uh, stylus. Let's see, this guy here would work. Um, just to kind of swirl it around a little bit because the metallic can be so stringy and then it also just makes the metallic part swirl around as well. Okay, so now I want to add a top dot in the carousel pink on the big pink petals. And so I'm gonna do this in a smaller size than the original dot. So maybe the 5.5. And there's two ways you can do this. You can either do the dot right in the center or what I'm gonna do is you can do it on the center bottom. So it actually creates like a crescent on the existing dot. I just really like doing the dots at the bottom center. I feel like it really looks like it's growing outwards when you do it that way. So I kinda, there's no rhyme or reason necessarily. It's just what I feel like I want to do. And also the placement On the bigger red dot that we'll do next, I might do it in the center because it's not like coming out of the center. It has a heart under it. If that makes any sense, it might not. So I use the Tuscan red. So now I'm going to go with the crimson and do a dot on top of that one. So again, I want it to be smaller. I think the six would actually be okay. And this one we could do... Either or, we could mimic the first one, or for this one, we could do it right in the center, which I quite like. Okay, one more. Perfect. I absolutely love what the top dots do to a piece. It just gives it so much depth and dimension. Um, okay, so I was going to do the carousel pink as well on these guys. And so... I think I want to go one smaller than that, if not two. 
Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Where would I have that? Okay, so I have a three and a half and four. So I think the four might be okay. Let's try it and see. So I'm going to get some carousel pink. And then for these ones, I like doing the bottom center as well. Just gives it a neat visual effect that they're all bursting from the center out. Of course, you could do them in the middle. You certainly don't have to do it that way. And then I will let this dry overnight or for 24 hours before I remove the guidelines. I've used a watercolor pencil. Sometimes I've used chalk. And my favorite way to remove them is with a microfiber cloth. You just <clears throat> dampen it with some water. And I really truly feel like that works the best, especially if you're using um, a surface or even wood that is not 100% smooth. <clears throat> the baby wipes work too. Just sometimes the little like fibers on them get caught and come off. So that's why I really prefer the microfiber cloth but you can use a wet paper towel q-tips baby wipe anything okay so there we go with that one so it's looking pretty good now I'm just wondering if I want to oh I love it if I want to top dot my hearts in the metallic and I I'm feeling like I do. So to do that, um, I'm just going to move that out of the way. Okay. So to do that, um, again, I'm not super familiar with these tools yet. I feel like the two could work because I used the style four initially and I want to put a smaller heart on top now. So this is so funny because <clears throat> it was not this stringy before when I was using it. So I guess just from it being open in the air, the metallic paint kind of got thicker. So now I'm just drawing on using the same technique. I'm just kind of top dotting the heart. How fun is that? So I'm going to just do that to all four of them. And then for varnishing, um, in the summer I really like spray varnishes because they're so easy and you don't miss any spots. It's not fussy at all. But in the winter here, because of the temperatures, it's not an option. I don't have a ventilated space where I can do that safely. Um, and I cannot do it in minus 35. So I use uh, brush on varnishes. So you could use matte, satin, or gloss. I don't love the high gloss finish for wall decor um, just because of the reflection it creates. I prefer the matte or the satin. For this one, I'll definitely do the satin because it does have the beautiful metallics in it and just the feel of the Valentine's piece and such. It'll be nice to have a, just a little tiny bit of like that sheen finish to it. And I have um, Duraclear works really well. I love Liquitex. I've only invested in the high gloss though. Um, and I don't wanna use the gloss. So I'll use a Duraclear, which I get at Michael's Craft Store, um, brush on varnish to protect the piece so I usually let it dry like a good 24 hours if not 48 before I apply the varnish on okay there we go so you can really you could add top dots on these guys we could do a top dot on these dots here under the heart to kind of match in the 
metallic. I love that. And then like I was mentioning, I could top dot the outer ring here, either in the metallic or you could do the bright red or one of the pinks um, to really just create that visual pop. So there's lots of different options. I'm, I kind of actually like it the way it is. Um, so I'm undecided if I want to add top dots or not. And then there is still some negative space um, in these areas here. So there's definitely room to do more. It would be really pretty to do a swoosh, a swoop down to kind of frame that in and really make it look like petals. Could also do um, like three little dots or something like that as well. I'm tempted to try doing a little bit of a swoosh. I think that might look pretty, but it also is really, really pretty just like this. 